Hey guys, how you guys doing? Welcome back to the channel. Great to see you guys again. Thank you so much for clicking on this video to watch this video, taking the time out of your day. Before we start the video though, I'd like to take a moment to say if you have not yet, please go ahead and hit that like button, the subscribe button, and the notification button so that that way you get notified of every new video that I make. And of course the like only helps me in YouTube's algorithm and it helps this channel. Also, if you have already done all those, then might I ask you to hit the super thanks button or maybe even the join button. Either way, I'm humbled for what you do. Today's video, we are going to talk about Laya Linux. It's a review. Of, we did one a couple weeks ago as an initial because I just found it. Uh, after I did the review, the developer reached out and told me, you kind of did the review a little too early because we're just getting ready to release one. And in talking on my Discord server, by the way, don't forget to join that as well. Link will be in the description. Uh, he and I got to conversing about the, some of the changes that he was making in Lia Linux. And so I told him, you know what? I normally don't review another one for until, you know, another, you know, a couple months, more months down the road. Uh, but I said, I'll make an exception for this one because this person is a very young adult, possibly even maybe teenager age, you know, 15, 16, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure the exact age, but this is a young man who is in India. And so anytime I could find myself in my way of helping out the youth of Linux, I will. Uh, in fact, I have a couple of them that are admins on my Discord, believe it or not, which is amazing. And I enjoy it. So either way, let's go ahead and take a look at Lia Linux. What we're going to start off with is the uh, release notes, which is on the forums. Uh, that he has quite nicely put a actual link to on his uh, desktop when you install Lia Linux. So it's right there. Or you can go to lialinuxfreeflarum.com. And uh, this is the Argon version. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that uh, release notes over there. On it, and he uses Brave Browser, by the way. Uh, as you can see right here, there's a notification for Brave right here. So he uh, has released it, and it comes with the Cinnamon 5.68. Although Cinnamon 5.81 has been released, he asks, please do not upgrade to it, which is right here, uh, as it breaks the system and will give you some issues that need to be fixed. So that's something to bear in mind about. And also why a release in this short amount of time, he explains why he did a release so fast. A lot of it has to do with the half-baked GTK4 GNOME apps uh, integration in the OS and people were putting many issues with it. So he decided to, to fix it and, and go uh, with the GTK44 apps, I believe. Uh, no, with the classics, sorry, the apps, with, our, with the classic app collection that he has from GNOME 40. Uh, that's the correction, he went with GNOME 40, not 44 apps. So, either way, that's there. Now, what he's included are uh, a couple of new um, applications as well that were different from the actual last distribution. One is the MSM, uh, was completed before the deadline and was integrated with their system now. And so now, also, he's got some new QT apps that he's put in there. Also, uh, he's got rid of Calculator and installed actually GNOME Calculator, uh, one of those apps that were breaking. Uh, he also did, this one is going to be a bit controversial. I, I, I can already feel the controversy through the ether. And uh, it's chat GPT has now been integrated fully into your desktop if you need an actual assistant slash companion. So uh, I know that a lot of people are against chat GPT. If you have no problems with chat GPT, you can certainly try it out on here. Uh, basically, what, well, I'll talk about that later. Uh, the new apps that have been added are Boab, Logs. Oh, crap. Sorry about that. Logs, GNOME Disks, replaced Gparted, UGit, which uh, was per Persepolis, uh, Warpinator, 
uh, X player, which replaces MPV. So uh, I've not used X player. I am an MPV fan, and I love the simplicity of MPV. So I'm not sure if you've used X player before. Let me know in the comments down below what you think as compared to MPV. If you've come, if you've done both, I may actually have to do a video on that. Uh, he he uh, Geary replaces Thunderbird. Uh, the GNOME 40 dictionary replaces the XFC. XFCE 4 dictionary. Uh, hardware and system settings of the MSM GUI has been given in, which is much like I think the, the Manjaro GUI. Also, um, they uh, removed uh, the actual branding from Arch in there and implemented some other uh, branding, so we'll see what that looks like. Uh, you resource was removed, as, or was uh, now added, sorry, not removed, but added for increased performance. Uh, and also the legacy drivers um, are enabled for your NVIDIA GPU, so the TKG drivers, the use of the TKG drivers. Um, so you now have 470, 525, 530 uh, enabled to be able to use them as well. And when you go into the actual grub menu, you can see where you can actually boot in through those also flat pack has has been uh is supported on there but it's disabled by default so you have to enable it if you want to use flat packs the chat gpt controversy he actually addresses it here uh so if you want to not have it in here he's certainly put in already for you right down here on the very bottom the actual command that you need to remove it. That being said, now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual desktop environment itself. Okay, so this is the Cinnamon desktop. As you can see, he's got these icons already on the desk. These are, you know, standard typical ones where you got your my computer, you got your home directory, uh, your network, trash icon, of course, the install icon on a live USB. And then this is the to go to the forums. When you open it up, as you can see, he has Brave browser installed. Now within here, you've got the introduction to Laya, why he's got it pinned to the top. And then, of course, he's got the actual release stuff here uh, then you have your bottom bar which is your standard cinnamon layout which has got your launcher on the on the left hand side and then you've got your pinned to the taskbar uh, applications uh, he has kitty for the terminal when you open it up as you can see he is using pfetch right here and this is the branding he's talking about i believe along with the actual laya icon in the start launcher where where he has uh, taken all the Arch Linux branding out of uh, and use that. So uh, here it tells you what you're running. It's just standard pfetch, and he, it looks like he's using, um, hang on a second, ZSH shell. So uh, let's click on home and, and see. Oh, I think I found a bug. Um, Hisham, there, here's your bug right here. When you click on your icon for your home directory, it opens up Kitty, which is what you have installed for your terminal. So uh, that might be something to be look at, looked at right there. If you look, here's your application launcher, which we'll take a look at in a minute, at what's in there and what's highlighted as far as apps that are, you know, worth, you know, taking a look at. Uh, Kitty, like I said, we've already seen that. And then he's got your file manager, which if you open it up, that, double click on it every time. I don't know why. Uh, either way, uh, it's your standard typical file manager you know i do like the icons that he's got in there i like the sizing that he's got them set to so uh, it's very nice uh, in here you can actually scale them down and make them bigger and smaller whatever it is that you need right here at this bottom with the slider so uh, that's very nice uh, then of course he's got brave next to it which if we open it up we've already saw that when we went to the forum in the beginning but just for the sake of it let's see what version uh, we're on and it's the uh, 1.52 and the Chromium 1114. So it's a newer version, of course, which is nice. Uh, that keeps you up to date. As far as on the right-hand side of the bottom bar, you actually have your clipboard manager, your connection type, your uh, volume icon, and your calendar, which when you click on it and open it up, it gives you any events that you may have saved within the calendar and of course which day that you're on. So that is a brief look at the system tray. Now, for applications worth mentioning, well, you got un it's categorized. You've got pinned the file manager and your preferences. When you open up your preferences, uh, what's really cool to note in here is you got this themes right here. You can actually click over here on this desktop and you can change your themes. Now let's actually move this over a little bit. 
click on here. And so what th like these are all light themes right here. The regular ones are matcha uh, lights here. Uh, it, the ones that are dark are the dark themes. I like dark. So, you know, like we'll switch to the Perel light. Now check this out. Bam. That's light. Horrible. Ugly. Gnarly. Not my bootay. Uh, and it, like we click on this one, the dark Perel right here, which is a green one. Now your accent turned green. So that's how you can get to like your traditional mint access, uh, accent colors. Uh, the azul, let's do the orange one. Let's check out what that one looks like. That looks pretty cool. So I'll, I'll, I'll rock that one for a little bit. Kind of goes with his logo too, so that's kind of cool. Uh, either way, uh, that is a look at that for add or remove. Now this is where you can add and download other themes to go with it. Uh, that you can actually swap to real quick. Uh, as far as settings are concerned, this is where you can customize the menu settings and the buttons, where you can show the icons on and off, uh, and on the buttons as well, and also your scroll behavior, your scroll bar behavior. So there's that, and that's a look at what's under your preferences. Now for accessories, uh, notably to mention is your you got here you got your um, Nemo. Uh, you got GNOME Discs here, uh, you've got your Screenshot Tool, Text Editor, and Warpinator. Under Games, you've got Chess. For Graphics, you have the Document Scanner, uh, My Paint, which is a paint tool, and Pix, which is your pick reviewer. For Internet, of course, you've got Brave, Deluge, Geary, which you know about. And what's nice is he's got a VPN already installed, Proton VPN, and you get. So uh, for Office now, he's got only Office installed, which... I say to a lot of people when they ask me, uh, should we install and which office should we install uh, when it comes to distros? And I believe in no office should be installed automatically. I think that that should be left up to the user because only office is a very Microsoft office compatibility geared type office, whereas LibreOffice is not. Uh, you can set it up to be used that way, and you know you can do a lot of things to it to make it do what it does. But once again, it's just the difference. And some people prefer only Office, other people prefer Libre. Chances are you're not going to guess the right Office that they want. So why put it in when they're only going to uninstall it anyhow and install the one that they like? Kind of like text editors as well. You have to install a text editor, but you don't have to install two or three of them. You know, just install one uh, so that that way the user can change that as well uh, it, to the ones that they like. Some people love Nano. Some people love Vim. Some people like Leaf Pad. Some people like Mouse Pad. Some people like uh, God only knows. You know, there's tons of text editors. G-Edit. I mean, there's tons out there. You know, let people choose what it is that they want to do. It's a lot less aggravation, a lot less maintenance on your part. Um, so, yeah, that's a, that's, that's, that's a good takeaway. For other, he's got the, again, where you can get to the actual um, forum. Uh, for program, he's got ChatGPT. Now, this is the controversy right here that's going to come off of this review and off of this distribution. Now, I'm going to go on record that I am not a person who believes that you should be putting ChatGPT into your actual distribution. I think that's one of those things like Office that you should let the user install that. Uh, he did make mention in his release notes, as I said earlier, there's a command in there on how to remove it. Just know that it's there. For under sound and video, he's got Cheese, Exhale, which is your regular MP3 player. And then he's got Media Player. Now, the Media Player is going to be your X Player. Um, as I said before, if you've used X Player before as compared to MPV, let me know kind of what the differences are. I've never used X Player, so it's not something I know. And what your experiences were with it. So... Uh, under administration, uh, you got D Dconf Editor, G Smart Control, the Disk Analyzer, HTOP, the Kitty install, of course, your Light DM greeters, and uh, all those system things that you can do. Oh, you got the System Profiler, System Monitor, and uh, notably, he's got Time Shift installed, which is very, very nice um, because with Time Shift, that allows you to actually uh, set up. Um, sorry, under this it allows you to set up snapper which will give you a snapshot that you can actually when you boot into grub it gives you the option to roll it back there so if you have an issue uh, that you can get to grub but you can't get into your regular operating system uh, you can certainly do it there to roll it back which in my past experiences i've actually had to do that for preferences of course it's your not your standard everyday preferences date time uh bluetooth manager applets 
um, desktop display extensions, firewall general, all the good stuff uh, are right here for you to actually uh, take a look at. Uh, one thing else that I wanted to talk about and here is also he's got theme or um, the window tiling. So you can enable window tiling. So if you think that you might want to play with a uh, a faux type uh, window manager, well, then this will switch your compositor right to you know tiling so you can kind of play with it a little bit and see if it might be something you want to try down the road so that's worth noting uh as well and of course you got your general system settings right here where if you click on it it opens up to all the ones that we looked at earlier before that is a pretty quick rundown of the newest distribution and release of Lila Linux where he's actually added some stability cleaned up some of the actual apps looks and feel which it looks nice uh, I thoroughly enjoy this. I'm excited for what he's done. I mean, it's only its third release of it, you know, uh, update and upgrade. So he's done a lot of work. And like I said, he's a kid, uh, a young man, actually, a young man. And he is doing so well and he's working so hard with it. Uh, I do know that he's been working with some of the other, dist uh, the other distro maintainers in my Discord. And it's amazing to see what, what the, the help that he's getting and the support from the community there so uh guys if you've tried lie linux uh let me know how you felt about it also uh, if you upgraded to it if you have any known issues leave a comment down below if you haven't tried it please do it only helps to give the kid feedback so that, that way he can fix what he needs to fix to make it a much better distribution um even if it's you know the chat gpt thing also that is another thing i want to hear comments on tell me what you really feel about chat gpt integration in linux y'all keep doing what you do stay blessed keep on linuxing and above all have a great day and i will definitely see you in my very next video thank you so much bye now